welcome. Hope everyone out there is getting settled in. Uh, it's a beautiful, sunny summer day here in Seattle. Whether you're at the office, working from home, or just tuning in on the edges of your day, uh, hope you're finding the balance uh, this summer and doing all right. So my name is Damian Kaspauer. I'm software product manager here at Audio Kinetic, and we're going to go deep into the WISE 23.1 beta. So uh, stick with me here. I've got an overview of the features. And as we're moving through, drop any comments or questions you have into the chat. I'll be circling back to those at the end and uh, try to uh, get any answers out to you. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in and let's go. So today we're going to take a look at the new features coming to the full release of WISE 23.1 in the fall and available today as part of the beta. Uh, the WISE beta is an opportunity to put your hands on and try out these new features that are coming to a future release and hopefully to an audio pipeline near you. Uh, it gives you an idea of where WISE is headed, how it will arrive in your workflows, and brings an opportunity to provide valuable feedback for future versions. So whether you're reporting a bug, engaging with the WISE community Q&A, communicating directly with support, or taking the feature release survey associated with each release, the information you provide as part of the beta finds its way back to the teams at the center of WISE development. It contributes to the stability of the full release and helps drive features for each release towards greater usability. Uh, so super important to, if you have the time, uh, help provide that perspective so we can continue to grow in the direction of your workflows. And in 22.1, we introduced the contextual navigation of object tabs and object tab groups in WISE towards a center-focused editing workflow that presents the properties and default editors for objects in clear view. And we work with the community during the development of these fundamental changes to help validate the direction uh, that they would take in the hopes that they would better support your interactive pursuits using WISE. And as part of the release features survey for 22.1, we asked about your experience with this feature. And during the beta and over these last months since releasing, uh, we've been glad to hear that the majority have been satisfied or, or very satisfied with those changes. Uh, and we, when we asked folks to compare specific tasks. The majority found that the new editing workflow was about the same. Uh, while many found these tasks better or much better than previous releases. And to me, this means that we were able to maintain the workflows that you rely on while making significant improvements moving forward. And in places where we received critical feedback over the course of the development of WISE 2023.1, we've been able to make new workflows even better. So you'll see some of that coming up. So I just wanted to say thanks to the folks who took the time to share their feedback about their experience with WISE and to the developers at Audio Kinetic with their ears open to the community. Uh, we're always out there listening and uh, working together with folks towards these interactive audio tools uh, across the industry. So I invite you to download the 23.1 beta directly through the Audio Kinetic Launcher. After logging in from the WISE tab, you'll find a special category that presents the beta for installation. And a reminder, uh, because this is an early version of the eventual full release, it's important that you don't migrate your production to the beta. Uh, make a copy offline, create a branch, spin up a new project to test the features, but 
don't transition your development to a beta or preview version. Now let's dig into what's coming to WISE 2023.1 and included in the beta across the categories of spatial audio, user experience, integrations, and plugins. First, I wanna tackle the exciting spatial audio features in this version of WISE, starting with a high level overview. So what is spatial audio? Uh, as it says here, any technology that processes audio with the goal of convincing you that the sounds originate from the world around you. It's a broad term that has come to mean different things and at Audio Kinetic, the fundamental goal continues to persist, to convince you that the sounds originate from these worlds that you're creating. Convincing either because of the ability to match our experience with sound in the real world, or by giving you the creative tools to support dynamic and believable interactive experiences. And the first way we support this believability in WISE is with the use of 3D audio. By leveraging technologies like 3D spatialization and the object-based audio pipeline, along with higher order ambisonics when mixing, the output of WISE is adaptable to any output format and can deliver a high degree of spatial precision to platforms that offer binauralization. And in WISE 20. 23.1, we've added support for Apple Spatial Audio so that folks who are listening to experiences on Apple devices can receive greater spatial precision. Additionally, we are adding support on Android devices that include the Android Spatializer, delivering that same increased precision for spatial audio. And it's steps like this that contribute to a shared goal that we announced as part of our partnership with Dolby to continue to focus on bringing developers a standardized way to produce and deliver spatial interactive audio content for games that is adaptive across devices and platforms. And lastly, we've added support for 3D spatialization of sources with height channels, in addition to the ability to use speaker panner steering uh, setting to redistribute the content of an object's source audio to ambisonic configurations. To summarize, we've added 3D audio support to more platforms while providing more tools to leverage the increased fidelity offered by this new format. But that's just part of the spatial audio story and these next features focus on acoustic simulation or how sounds propagate through space. Geometric acoustics, which models the propagation of sounds as acoustic rays or the lines along which acoustic energy is transported, is the model we use in WISE as the foundation for our runtime spatial audio acoustic solution. Uh, and that helps create realistic representation of spaces. Uh, and in Engine, this is represented through the use of geometry, along with the concept of rooms and portals, which we're gonna dig into a little bit later, along with the addition of some new functionality. And then there are the early reflections of the Reflect plugin and late reflections using algorithmic and convolution reverb plugins. And each release of WISE continues to evolve the acoustic representation closer to the science, while simultaneously making spatial audio easier to use, more optimized, and more convincing. Uh, but there's also the need to support and express the unique sonic aspects of today's interactive experiences. So let's dive into what's coming as part of WISE 2023.1 to help support the goals that developers have for the realistic and creative representation of spaces they're creating. We're starting out with continuous ray casting. Uh, and simply put, ray casting provides information to filter and process sounds using the game's geometry. 
raise cast from the listener, scan the environment in real time for nearby objects which may interact with a sound path. And with the information that WISE gathers, reflection, diffraction, and transmission paths are efficiently constructed to modulate the rendering parameters of sounds played in WISE. You know, understanding these spaces surrounding the listener uh, means that WISE can better represent the environmental influence on sounds using spatial audio at a greater degree of precision. And now, a number of primary rays can be defined and continually cast on each frame. Uh, it spreads the load over several frames and prevents CPU peaks. And this new approach optimizes the overall cost of this continuous ray casting. So instead of in bursts, it simplifies that impl implementation it, while also enhancing the performance of it. Uh, we've also added initialization settings for tuning the number of rays in our SDK and exposed it in our integrations. So again, continuously ray casting uh, has been optimized and provides a greater uh, fidelity over that information that we can get from an environment. Another aspect of spatial audio and wise relies on the ability to know what room a sound is in so that the sound accurately propagates towards the listener using the correct reverb. Previously, it was the game engine's sole responsibility to calculate room containment, but now it's possible to perform this calculation directly and automatically inside wise. So in most cases, WISE can automatically determine the correct room to assign to a game object, even if a room is fully contained inside of another, as long as it doesn't share any surfaces with the surrounding room. Now there's some scenarios like a room that's partially inside another room or rooms that share common surfaces. And in that case, we've implemented a priority system that determines the correct room to assign. Uh, for instance, if an object is inside several rooms at the same time, the assigned room is always the one with the highest priority or the innermost room according to the results of the ray casting if the priorities are the same. The API still provides a way to overwrite the automatically assigned room for a given game object, supporting backward compatibility and custom room containment algorithms. Uh, but the specified room replaces the automatically assigned room until the room association is explicitly removed. So really this is just a way to uh, identify where sounds are in the world, what room they belong to, uh, in order to make decisions about how that sound is going to propagate and eventually arrive at the listener uh, sounding correct. Meanwhile, we've made several improvements to the way that reflections propagate through portals. Uh, previously, when the emitter and listener were in separate rooms, the paths between them were found in a kind of piecewise fashion. And this approach resulted in a complex process where path segments from the emitter to the portal, from the portal to portal, and from portal to listener were constructed by stitching these different paths together. But Spatial Audio now uses a stochastic engine for pathfinding that leverages portal edge receptors, essentially allowing for the propagation just like regular geometry. Uh, and this includes reflections through portals. So reflection paths passing through portal, portals are now much more accurate they may reflect off of walls on either side of the portal, including walls in an intermediate room between two portals. Okay, so these are just a few features that we're at work, uh, that they all work behind the scenes to ensure that WISE is getting the information that it needs in a way that's optimized, transparent, and fundamental to understanding the environment and how to shape that sound. So now let's take a look at some changes to how spaces are represented, uh, new tools that expand on how these spaces are created 
and controls to help you tune early reflections. With Wise Spatial Audio, late reverberation is designed using auxiliary sends that can include reverb. Uh, this workflow is supported by exposing a simple, high-level geometry abstraction called Rooms and Portals. Uh, and it allows for the efficient modeling of emitter sound propagation. If we think about rooms as dimensionless and connected with an one another by portals, together they form a network of defined spaces and apertures that sound propagates through to reach the listener, right? I mean, I'm sitting in a room. Portals over here, window, door. This is, uh, we're used to this. Anyways, 2021, uh, 2022, a lot of 20s. In Wise 2023.1, the addition of reverb zones expand on this methodology to uniquely customize spaces within rooms without portal connections. So reverb zones are rooms with a specified parent room. No portal is needed between a reverb zone and its parent. Uses for this include covered areas with no walls, forested areas within an outdoor space, or any situation where multiple reverb effects are desired within a common space. So let's take a look at one simple scenario. Uh, we've got this outdoor space uh, that we can define as our parent room. And in the center, we've got this group of trees which we can author as a reverb zone, uh, allowing sound uh, to you know, naturally propagate. We can enter this group of trees at any angle without requiring a portal and, uh, and seamlessly transition between the reverberation of the outdoor space and maybe a different reverberation of this uh, forested area in the center. So again, reverb zones are essentially rooms, but with two additional properties. They get a parent room uh, and they get a transition region width. And that region width is a region between the reverb zone and its parent centered around the reverb zone geometry. Uh, it's not time-based. It's a location-based transition. Uh, a parent room can have multiple reverb zones, but a reverb zone can only have a single parent. Uh, a reverb zone can't be its own parent. Uh, there's an automatically created outdoor room that's commonly used as the parent room for reverb zones. And reverb zones are also subject to other acoustic phenomena simulated in WISE spatial audio, such as diffraction and transmission. So they're spatialized according to their 3D range or extent, and they're part of the revised room auxin model and form reverb chains with other rooms. And we'll be talking about that revised room auxin model here in a second. Here's another example going a little bit deeper. Uh, imagine this fantastic uh, cabin uh, perched in the center of this body of water. And we can define this outdoor space uh, as the parent room for our, uh, for our spatial audio. Uh, additionally, we have these forested areas on the fringe that we could author as reverb zones. We can enter them from any point and we'll get a natural transition defined by that transition width uh, as we move in and out of these forested areas. Next up, we've got the cabin itself, uh, which is authored as a room with portals for each of the windows and the doorway we've got to get in somehow. Uh, and that leads out to a balcony which is exposed on three of the uh, uh, five sides, uh, not facing the cabin room. 
Uh, and where we do have that portal uh, attached to the door in the cabin, uh, from the reverb zone, we just have this natural transition between both the outdoor room, uh, its parent, as well as that portal that is leading into the cabin. So lastly, we've got this garage underneath, a little tuck under to put our boat in the winter. Win winter and, uh, and this is just a room with a portal that transitions seamlessly to the outdoor room as well. So this is just one more uh, example going a little bit deeper into how you can use uh, reverb zones in conjunction with the existing rooms and portals functionality in order to get better uh, and more seamless transitioning between these different kinds of spaces. Yeah, thanks uh, for folks in the chat. More capybaras. We'll see what we can do for you. And Alvin Lucier reference. Yeah, that was super fun. <laughs> thanks for catching on to that. Uh, in order to support these scenarios, uh, the room Oxen model has been revised to allow greater precision for diffraction, transmission loss, occlusion, and obstruction throughout the mixing process, while enabling emitters to send directly to all the adjacent rooms, along with their direct sound paths to the listener. Our previous room Oxen model was a single path serial model that carried auxiliary send contributions from one room to the next. Uh, combining, re combining reverbs as sound passed between rooms and preventing the calculation of diffraction along the way. So couldn't do that. Now sounds can propagate through an environment with the reverb contribution across different rooms preserved. Uh, because an emitter now sends to adjacent rooms. And when the emitter and listener are in the same room, but close to an open portal, the sound can excite the nearby room. And that's pretty cool. Uh, this change enhances the level of fidelity applied to the emitter's send value and means that diffraction can now be calculated differently for each room. So really this is just about being able to open up these opportunities for, uh, for more precision when it comes to filtering between rooms, as well as the representation of that room's environmental reverb uh, to be its own thing, right? Uh, great stuff. So, Reflect is a geometry-informed plugin that dynamically renders early reflections based on the proximity of the listener or emitter to, to other reflective surfaces like walls, ceilings, floors. Uh, so yeah, the sound that bounces off surfaces, uh, that first reflection uh, is, is what Reflect does best. However, there's an artifact that surfaces in certain scenarios that can be perceived as phasing or the overlapping of the same sound within a few milliseconds causing the cancellation of frequencies. It sounds kind of unnatural, whooshy. It sounds phasey, I think people say. And uh, the Reflect plugin now offers two different ways to reduce phasing, giving you the ability to tune these early reflections for the most natural representation. Uh, the direct sound max delay setting suppresses artifacts that can occur between reflections and the direct sound, fusing those reflections below a threshold and mitigating phasing. Cool trick, not too costly. Uh, while the decorrelation strength controls a filter that scrambles these reflected signals just enough so that they sound similar to the unscrambled signal. Uh, but different enough to prevent the comb filtering when mixed with the direct sound. And there's two modes for decorrelation, favor performance or favor quality, and this gives you the ability to balance the cost of decorrelation to fit your CPU budget. And we also found that the decorrelation filter could be used to widen the stereo field. And we had some discussions with folks out there using Reflect, and 
this option to them felt like a creative extension of the plugin and allowed them to expand the creative palette that they had when trying to support different experiences, like taking things into, uh, into a different sound experience based on gameplay, uh, leveraging some of these properties of the Reflect plugin. So we really think this is uh, not just a reflection of reality, see what I did there, uh, but also a uh, creative expression uh, that you can use to match with your gameplay. So there's been several spatial audio improvements that simplify the use of obstruction in rooms and portals in Unreal. And we've added access to the new features we've been talking about, like the new AK Reverb Zone component, along with updated tool tips to aid in your understanding of each property in context in the game engine. So just trying to give you what you need, where you are to understand spatial audio and apply it across your experiences. So those are some of the features in WISE 2023.1 that contribute to creating believable environments while still allowing for creative expression. To summarize, WISE 2023.1 now supports more platforms that can receive the object-based audio format towards the best spatial precision, adaptable across all outputs, uh, we're expanding the solutions to help build convincing environmental sound experiences, and we've optimized the performance to help grow the adoption and accessibility of spatial audio at runtime. Next up is a series of changes that arrive squarely in the WISE workflow. So flipping to WISE authoring, uh, you know, we're extending functionality, building on that editing workflow, and delivering usability updates that keep you focused on delivering dynamic interactive audio. And it starts with increasing the number of effects that can be used for each object. You don't have to work around the four effect slot limit to reach for more dynamic or rendered effects anymore. And while it's technically not unlimited, we think that the new limit of 255 effects per object gives folks enough room to dream up and implement some wild experiences with effects. But remember, DSP ain't free. So keep an eye on those CPU budgets. Uh, it's a change that's represented across all of the views. Uh, also includes the ability to add, delete, insert, and edit, uh, along with multiple selection, copy, paste, and delete. So just some nice usability improvements alongside with this increased effects per object. We've also reoriented the layout of all the effects and their properties to fit better in the horizontal space of the secondary editor. So that Secondary editor as part of an object tab now, uh, you know, will automatically fit to the height of the effect plugin. Uh, it now sets that maximum height depending on uh, the effect, unless you manually adjust the height using the horizontal splitter bar. So it'll remember that, but otherwise it's going to try to do the smart thing right off the bat. And when the audio device editor made the jump to tab-based navigation in 2022.1, some of the functionality that makes contextual editing work smoothly was left behind. But thanks to feedback from the community, we've brought the audio device meters and effect editors to the secondary editor. And that keeps the navigation of effects and their properties in context with the audio device, while moving meters from the primary editor to their own editing tab. It also makes it possible to switch between share sets of the cross-platform mastering suite without navigating away from the object tab, something that was missing and really just didn't feel right. And so we've taken that and iterated forward to make it feel more uh, a part of the object tab workflow. It also made it possible for us to include a meter tab for every audio bus in the secondary editor. So that meter tab can now be detached using the open in new window button. Uh, 
And doing this automatically pins the meter in a floating window that's not associated with any of the four meter instances. So this now means that you can have as many meters as you'd like, expanding that opportunity to monitor different parts of your audio hierarchy. So yeah, throw up a bunch of meters, uh, get it all laid out the way you like it. Uh, there's another feature that uh, feeds into that coming up. And we're always in discussion with folks out in the community using WISE in their daily workflows. And sometimes it's the little things that come up in these conversations that find their way back to improve usability. As I mentioned at the start of the presentation, we're focused on the continued improvement of that user experience. So here are a few things that have found their way into WISE 2023.1. Talking about layouts, we've added four user layouts uh, to the layouts menu that allow you to save customized configurations of views. So now you can create personalized layouts to support specific workflows without modifying any of the default layouts. So go ahead, put a, a, a whole screen of meters uh, on one side so that you can keep track of things uh, over time. We've also done some improvements to the blend track and RTPC graph, uh, small changes to the presentation of these graphs, overlaying object names while optimizing the space that is occupied by the graph. So again, just uh, zooming it in a bit, giving you a, a bigger visibility for those graphs and additionally optimizing them for different font sizes. So. You know, again, just trying to, to bring a bit more usability. Uh, the source editor and music segment editor workflow uh, now provides greater control over auditioning and marker manipulation. You can position the cursor uh, anywhere on the timeline ruler at the top. You can then drag that cursor to any position in the source uh, while the precise time is displayed. So. Additionally, you can hold the Alt key while hovering over a marker, cursor, or cue in the music segment editor to display the time. And, and this just allows you more affordance when you're working with sources and, uh, and music segments. So another nice usability piece. Uh, this one came up in a meeting with a developer the other day when I mentioned it to them, they just got wide-eyed and excited. It's being able to resize the Soundcaster game syncs list. So if you're working in the, the Soundcaster, uh, previously we kind of uh, clamped the, the space that the game syncs at the top would take, but now you can have control. So you've got a giant list of RTPCs that you need to have access to. You can, uh, you can drag that horizontal splitter and get at everything you need. And lastly, we've made some improvements to our search tool. You can now navigate the search tool results using the arrow keys. Uh, the selection of objects in the list of results is reflected in the recycling object tab, as well as in the transport control. So for the first time from that, those search tool results, uh, you can audition, uh, bam. You can also right-click an object in the list of results to access the shortcut menu without navigating away from the object tab that's in focus. So uh, along with the ability to use keyboard shortcuts with that selection. So again, just a, a, a nice roundup of usability tweaks, uh, some of them informed by discussions and all of them landing squarely in your WISE workflows. So another conversation that we've been having with developers using WISE is about the use of loudness normalization as a way to ensure consistent volume within sound categories. So loudness normalization is, a, uh, is something you can enable uh, in the conversions tab of uh, the properties for a object. And towards that goal of trying to ensure consistent volume uh, and provide greater flexibility, 
over the loud loudness measurement for short duration sounds, uh, we've added a momentary max type uh, along with a loudness target property uh, and included those measurements in the list view. And so you can now choose between the integrated measurement, uh, which is useful for long audio program material like music or cinematics, and the momentary max, which is better suited for short individual audio elements such as sound effects. So uh, generally anything below eight seconds. Uh, and this increases the ability to non-destructively tune the loudness normalization across different sound categories to arrive at a consistent standard to build your interactive mix. So if you're working on a team and everyone is shoveling sounds into, uh, into the project, uh, as someone who is taking a, a look at the mix across different milestones, you want to be able to arrive at that time with consistency. And so we think that the loudness normalization feature uh, allows developers to arrive with that consistency. And now the addition of the momentary max mode uh, can help tune those short duration sounds uh, even better. Meanwhile, we've replaced the DirectX 9 graphical backend with a modernized 3D graphics backend that's used to present the Game Object 3D Viewer, the 3D Meter, and the Audio Object 3D Viewer. Uh, this change also brings hardware compatibility improvements, along with a host of other user experience updates that improve first-person navigation, zoom, and smoother transitions between list item selections in the Game Object 3D Viewer. So these are our, our first steps with this new modernized 3D graphics backend, and we have plans to continue evolving the way that you interact with our 3D views in WISE. WISE 2023.1 includes the largest WISE authoring API update since the introduction of the API in 2017. Uh, WAPI, as it's called, is used to communicate with the WISE authoring application from an external application, like a Python script or a C++ program. Uh, developers have been integrating WAPI into their game development pipelines and using it as a way to automate certain tasks and improve the data quality in their daily workflows. And with every release of WISE, we try to balance addressing customer feedback about WAPI with our own internal development. Uh, and in 2023.1, we're tackling two big topics that developers have communicated to us about. One is using WAPI in a source control environment, and two is increasing the coverage accessible through WAPI by refactoring some of our data models, including interactive music objects. So towards this, we've added audio file import when creating objects, new WAPI functions, a better work unit and perforce experience, and the aforementioned expanded object model access. And working in conjunction with WAPI is the WISE authoring query language, or WACL. And in 2023.1, we've added list support, list functions, aliases in return expressions, support for returning complex structures and arrays, and new accessors in WACL expressions in queries. And all of this adds up to more ways to get information about your WISE project that can be used to extend your development pipeline. So stay tuned for a series of articles on the AK blog that will cover these changes in depth. Uh, this is one that, uh, that you'll want to keep an eye out for. Now let's talk about some of the changes that we're making across our Unreal and Unity integrations. Uh, first, we've replaced our WISE picker. Uh, it's the WAPI picker. Uh, we have renamed this the WISE browser, and it's already included in our WISE, WISE Unreal integration in 22.1.5, as well as in the 23.1 beta. It brings the status of WISE and Unreal assets along with filters for sound banks, U assets, and types 
that can be used to focus on different aspects of the project status. So giving you visibility to what's happening uh, between Unreal and WISE. And using the new right-click shortcut menu, you can navigate the WISE project from Unreal, perform transport control operations, and we're not gonna stop there. Uh, stay tuned for the full release uh, in the fall for news of other plans we have in store and uh, keep them peeled as our point releases roll out for added functionality to the WISE browser that we're working on. Additionally, the WISE Unity integration now includes enter play mode options to reduce the time needed to enter the play mode from the editor and speeding up that auditioning workflow. So this iteration piece is something that is uh, very important to us. You'll hear a lot more about it in the years to come, but tightening up the iteration loop between the WISE, the game engine, and the game is one of our primary uh, motivations because we realize that the more you can iterate, the better you can make something sound. The last section I want to cover is plugins. Uh, our AK Channel Router plugin has been transformed to a mixer plugin uh, from a mixer plugin to an object processor effect plugin. Uh, you can use the AK Channel Router plugin to route and mix multiple buses with different channel configurations into a single bus. Uh, this is especially useful if you have an output device that has a lot of channels that require non-standard routing. So we're thinking about this in the context of location-based entertainment a lot. We're thinking about it for gallery installations or, uh, you know, thrill rides out there in the world. Uh, so now after you insert this effect on a bus, you can add a channel router setting metadata to any of its child buses to configure the channel to which the child bus will output. Uh, and this plugin can only be inserted on buses that have their bus configuration set to audio objects. Lastly, we're adding iOS, tvOS, and macOS to the list of platforms that can use the Motion plugin to provide haptics for controllers and other devices. On uh, bridging the gap between sound and vibration effects on Apple platforms. So if you're out there authoring Rumble or using uh, haptics as part of your experience, uh, we're now offering more platforms that you can experience that on. So everything we've presented here and more is included as part of the WISE 2023.1 What's New Beta Edition for you to revisit all of these things with even more depth at audiokinetic.com. And while you're at it, grab the beta. Uh, but don't migrate it to your production uh, or preview version of WISE. Uh, send us feedback. There's a survey attached to the beta in the launcher that you can uh, that you can get your hands on today. How about that intro? Uh, fantastic behind the scenes on that over at our YouTube channel. Dive in deep on the creation, composition, and execution of that fantastic new WISE logo. Uh, definitely something to jump to after this live stream. So with that, I say thank you. Thanks for being part of the WISE community and continuing to inspire us through the creation of incredible interactive audio experiences. I want to say thanks to the team at Audio Kinetic for uh, trusting me to carry their hard work on WISE 2023.1 uh, to you and represent all of uh, the great things that we've put in the box for you. Uh, Happy to stick around for a few minutes if there are any questions. Folks, feel free to uh, drop those in the chat. And, uh, and if I don't cover them here, uh, I can 
touch base with you after this through one of our communication channels. Uh, but otherwise, thanks so much for taking the time to in investigate the WISE 2023.1 beta. We hope you can deliver some feedback that will help us grow towards the full release in the fall. And otherwise, just uh, great to be here. I hope everyone is doing well and hope to see you out in the community soon. Cool. Everyone have a good day. Take care. Thanks for tuning in.